Hello, my name is Deepak Talreja. I'm a cardiologist with Cardiovascular Associates, and I'm here to talk with you today about advances in lipidology in 2017. In the Centera program, we've had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of the cutting edge trials in management of high cholesterol. That's obviously critically important in a heart hospital program where a lot of what we do is heart bypass surgery and heart stents. Prevention becomes the key, both primary prevention to prevent a patient from ever needing those things, and secondary prevention to help a patient once they've had a heart problem to not have that same problem or another problem like it again. Traditionally, the mainstay of our therapy has been statins, cholesterol medicines like atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, drugs like that, that work kind of at the level of the liver. They're anti-inflammatory, and they reduce the bad LDL cholesterol. As time has passed, we have a lot of patients on those, and those are clearly the first line of therapy. But sometimes they're insufficient to reach our target levels, and sometimes patients have difficulty tolerating them. There's been a spectrum of other medicines approved for additional use or alternate use. For example, azetamibe, niacin, or niaspan as the uh, approved medication-based version of that, well call, other drugs like that. The newest one, which we're very excited about after having participated in international trials, are the injectable antibody PCSK9 inhibitors. PCSK9 inhibitors are antibodies that are injected every two weeks to approximately every month and dramatically lower LDL cholesterol by about 60 to 70 percent, either on top of a statin or in patients who can't tolerate statins. We've seen the same numerical drops after injections in patients not on a statin or other therapy. They're obviously expensive agents, but they can potentially have great benefit. The latest trials have even shown reductions in major adverse cardiac events, which we've been eagerly looking forward to and anticipating. These drugs really have changed the way we treat lipid disorders now. So for the appropriate patients, patients who have known established vascular disease or genetic conditions like familial hypercholesterolemia that significantly raise their low density lipoprotein or LDL cholesterol, this is something to think about. Sometimes it's a little back and forth to get approval for these drugs, but we found that for the right patients, we can clearly get that done. And there's a lot of good assistance from the pharmaceutical organizations themselves to help these patients, especially with the dramatic declines what we see. While these agents, the PCSK9 inhibitors, are truly directed at LDL cholesterol, there have been favorable influences on HDL cholesterol, triglyceride level, total cholesterol, and the particle numbers as well. So they seem like the statins to have multiple beneficial effects. So who is the appropriate patient for one of these? Really the two groups we see are those who are on a statin and can tolerate as much as you have them on. You can't go past the dose they're on because either you're at max dose or that's the maximum dose they can tolerate without symptoms. And they still are not at their LDL target. So if they're on a statin and not at LDL target, that's a group you want to think about this for. The other group we want to think about is the truly statin intolerant patients. And note I say the truly statin intolerant. Many of us have thought about this over the years, and really what we require is a patient fail at least two or three statins, not a distant history of failing it. Whenever a patient comes to see me in consult, the first thing we do is re-challenge them with a statin. Even if they say, I've, I tried four of them and I had trouble with them, we re-challenge, we optimize therapy beforehand, we get them exercising, we have them hydrate well, we start at the lowest dose, even maybe intermittent dosing, like once or twice a week, and really prove to ourselves and them that they can't tolerate. Even in those patients that absolutely insist they can't take a statin, I've had a couple who we put them on therapy, and sure enough, this time they are able to tolerate it. But in those intolerant patients, that's another great group for this. One of the real benefits of these agents is with regard to the side effects. There seem to be very limited side effects, and most of them are restricted to flu-like symptoms on initiation which we see with many immunotherapies, or local site reactions where the injection is performed in the body, if it's the large muscles of the legs or arms or the belly. Those tend to be self-limiting and go away. 
the traditional problems we've seen with statins, where patients complain of muscle complaints, or where we worry theoretically about liver complaints, which really are very infrequent with statins. But those problems, there really hasn't been much of a signal for with these newer agents.